the benefits of mixing the drywall compound, essentially gonna get rid of the bubbles that's in the mud itself, and also gonna, it's gonna make it more workable. So when you put it on the wall, wipe it off, scoop it in your pan, it's just gonna be a lot easier um, to, to work with, essentially, and save you time in the end. Another way to make this process go a little bit smoother is to add a little bit of dish soap. Now for this, I don't add any water. Now when you're doing a skim coat, if you want a, a lighter, creamier finish, no bubbles whatsoever, so you add a little bit of water too. But for the tape coat, you want it to be a little bit heavier because this is the stuff that's going in your seams and creating that bond between each sheet of drywall. So no water at this point, just a little bit of dish soap. I found that uh, a metal pan is just easier to clean and easier to work with. So I use a six inch knife to tape. Again, there's no rules for this. Some people I've seen use eight inch knives. Some people use four inch knives. Six inch just seems to be the right size that fits in your bucket to scoop the mud out really easily. And it also gives you enough flexibility to move that tape where you need it to go. When you tape, you wanna do the whole length of a wall. You don't wanna have one piece of tape that starts in the middle and stops here. You wanna go the whole length of the wall. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so what we're trying to accomplish is we wanna put a layer of mud on the seam and we're gonna tape the seams first. Now you'll notice that these seams right here with the paper on the edges, they're the factory seam that has a little indentation. So just to show you, you don't have to go out to as far. So we're only gonna be six inches out and six inches out when we're done finishing. But for now, we just need our six inch knife and we just need to apply the tape. So. What we're going to do is we're going to apply mud first because we got to put the tape on top of the mud. So I just run my knife sideways right across the seam all the way down the line. So now we're applying the tape. Now this roll of tape costs about $2.50. It's not that expensive. It's just paper, but it is going to hold your seams together and prevent cracking. All right. Now they do also have a mesh option, which I've used in the past. A lot of times I like to use that in uh, wet places like bathrooms, um, but this will be fine for our application. And it is as simple as putting the tape right over the mud you just put on the wall. When we have this uh, GFI box, we're gonna stop our tape here and continue on the other side. After you get the tape on the wall, super simple step, you're simply gonna wipe it out and you're gonna put a decent amount of pressure but not too much. Now, the tape, this is paper, so sometimes it can crease and catch on the knife, so you want this to be a nice smooth motion if that makes sense. So we're just pressing the mud down in the seam that's behind the tape and making sure that that is getting filled. And um, if I haven't mentioned, Taping is step one of the finishing process. So you're gonna first do, you're gonna do three layers. You're gonna tape it, then you're gonna coat it, and then you're gonna skim it. So same process here. Um, if you get mud all over yourself, you're a true drywaller. So don't feel bad about that. Although I think 18 years ago when I started this, my uh, my journeyman, the people, the guy who trained me says like, you're, if you get any mud, if you drop any mud, you're a terrible drywaller, should be perfectly clean. I think he was just being a jerk um, because I've never not made a mess. <laughs> Wait a minute. Kirk, take that out too, that's no, terrible. <laughs> All right, so again, you're gonna just run your knife across the tape, getting all that mud underneath out of there not too hard on the first pass because you don't want to crease the tape. A second time, nice and firm. Once you tape your primary run, then you're going to have to address the butt joints. So you, I do that second. So we're going to look at these butt joints and it's the same thing. We're going to run your knife, nice thin line for the tape. All right, so now we find ourselves at a corner that we need to tape. Now this is the same principle as a flat wall, except there's one extra step. Instead of just putting the mud on the seam itself, in a corner we have to go on both sides. 
So I'm going to do the same type of uh, strategy with putting the knife sideways. We're going to go all the way down on one side and all the way down on the other side. Now when we put the tape on, we're going to give it, you'll actually notice a line in the center of your drywall tape. And it just folds in half very easily. And you're just going to give that a nice crease. Once you have the tape creased, you're simply going to just put it right in the corner with your fingers. And when you get to the bottom, you're going to take your knife and you're going to put it into the corner and just pull it right out. Now, if you see any uh, mud on the floor, scoop it up with your knife and put it on the outside of your pan. You don't want to put it back in your pan and get dirt in there because then you don't get a nice smooth finish. You're just going to take your knife and gently. Now, corners are a little bit more fragile than flats. So I'm going to do, I don't want to push too far into the corner because you don't want to rip your tape. So I'm just going to do nice and soft on both sides. Make sure that mud is getting underneath the tape. See, this is starting to pop up here. You're going to take a little mud from your pan and just put it right over that. Just make sure that that is all laying flat. Just like on a flat surface, if you see a little crease, you're just going to take your tape and you're going to pull on it, push it down to the ground. You'll get those creases right out. And then lightly. So now that we have our flats, our butt joints, and our corners taped out, we have one final step in the taping process, and that's the first cover for the screws. So the best way to do this is you want to do a thin, as small as possible, because every layer you go a little bit bigger. And the reason you go bigger on the next layer is to hide the seam. What that does is that prevents a lot of additional sanding. So you want to make the sanding process as easy and as simple as possible. Less mess, less time. Today we are putting a second coat, which is going to be the second step of the drywall portion. Um, so we're using a different type of mud for this one. I use lightweight mud for my coating and my skimming coats. Um, it just It's easier to work with. and it goes on a little bit faster. When you're putting that much mud on a 10 or 12 inch knife, you want to move quickly. And if you have the multi-purpose stuff, it's heavier and it'll slow you down a bit. So lightweight stuff works great. I do use the multi-purpose stuff on the first coat of the taping, which I said previously, but nonetheless, we're using lightweight mud today. And this time we're going to add not only the dish soap, but we're going to add a little water when we mix it. So let's put some dish soap in here. And I put some water in my pan. I'm just going to put a little bit in it first. So I want the mud, there we go. I want the mud to fall off a little bit just because I know that that's going to be super easy to work with. Now, if it pours off too much faster than that, it might run on the wall, which is something that you don't want. So I'm not going to add any more water. I think we're good to go. Just as a reminder, I did let the mud dry overnight. So it depends really where you're at and what the humidity is, but I'm looking in the corners and a couple of my corners still are a little bit wet, but pretty much everything else is dry. So I can continue with the, the coat. Um, usually I let it go overnight. Sometimes it might take a little bit longer, but use your judgment. I'm going to use my 10 inch knife. Um, you can use an eight inch knife, but it's, it's gonna, basically what you want to do is you want to cover more than you previously did on the last layer. So I used a six inch knife on the last one. Now I'm using a 10 inch knife on the skim coat. I'm going to use my 12 inch knife and we're going to do the butt joints and the flats together. So first I'm just going to apply the mud. Now over your flats, it's just going to be centered with your 10 inch knife. Your butt joints are a little bit different because they don't have the valley 
where the tape lays. This is, these pop out a little bit more, so you're creating kind of a hump, so to speak. So you've got to go out 10 inches on each side to create a nice smooth finish. You can do the wall in sections, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, the first step to making a nice smooth surface is you got to cut your edge. So what I do is I put pressure with my index finger on the side that I'm cutting. And by cutting, I just mean we basically want to take this down so that there's no lip. So basically, this is going to make your sanding process a lot easier. So I'll go to the very end, and I just go all the way along the top. Now, I got to stop from time to time because you're going to get too much mud on your knife. Just cut it all the way down. And this is a quick process once you get comfortable with it. Now you slide your finger over to the other side when you're cutting the lower edge. Now once you get to the butt joint, you just follow that curve. <laughs> get it? <laughs> and then you're just going to go right down the middle. So you get into your corner so there's a nice finished I'm going to go all the way through. Now you put a little bit of pressure on this. Since this is a wider one, you're going to have to do a couple additional passes. Two on each side and one down the middle. Now you're going to notice that there's some lips here from, your, from not being able to cover the entire width of your line. Those sand out and those scrape out. Now we're still doing a skim coat tomorrow after this. So before I do it, I'll just scrape those lips off. If I need to use a little sand, but you, typically I don't, and then just skim coat it. Now if you see some lips on the edge like that, you want to avoid that. So I'm just gonna take my knife and clean that up a bit. And we just keep moving. All right, so today we do the skim coat, which is the final coat in your drywall process. Um, if you look closely, you're going to see some lips here where I got, where, which were created by going multi-directional with your knife. Now before we put the final coat on, we're just going to take your 12-inch knife. And by the way, your 12-inch knife is going to span a little bit past the stuff that you've already done because you want to cover any lips or any uneven surfaces um, that you've previously done in a, previously, in a previous uh, coat. Also, you'll notice that there's some chunks that are right here that have, essentially when I was doing corners up top or maybe even just covering these nails that dropped on the wall, I didn't try to scrape them off because it was still drying. I wait till everything dries, then I come back and I scrape it right off. Now, this doesn't have to be perfect. You just want it to be smooth enough to get that final coat on. And that final coat, you're gonna just wipe on and wipe off. So, we'll start in the corner. So the skim coat is the last and final coat, as I explained before. This is also your thinnest coat. So all you're trying to do is simply cover. You'll notice a little air bubble here. That happens every once in a while. You're just covering this and wiping it off. So you're not trying to build it up. You don't need to put too much pressure on one side or the other unless you're cutting that edge. But really, you're not wanna, you don't want to have too much mud on this last coat. So it's just a wipe on, wipe off sort of situation. So after you finish getting your flats and your butt joints, get any tape, uh, get any small repairs like around this outlet, and then you gotta do one final coat on our nails. And we're done. The final step before you prime and paint is sanding your drywall. Um, so you wanna make sure that you have a sander. Now these are 220 grit pads. They come in packages that you can buy in bulk. Um, the way they uh, are attached to this is they simply just screw right off. These clips pop out and then you just tighten them down. Super simple. All right, we also have a sanding block for our corners and any trouble spots that we have on the walls. Also 220 grit. 
So Sarah is going to sand this for us. Now we're going to start at the top of the wall and the reason I like to start top and work my way down is because it just, from the way I organize my thoughts, it's easier for me to work that way. Now when you start here, you're not going to go into the corner. So you want to have half of your pad on the green part and half of it on the drywall. You want to stay away from the corner because if you hit that corner, you're going to have to re-mud and it's going to be more drying. And it's, Got it. Yep. So nice so and, that's good. Yep. That's you don't need to put too much pressure. Just make sure it's oriented long ways. This way the, the sander won't roll on you. If it rolls, it could put some gouges in the wall. So just make sure wherever you're moving forward with the, the sander, mm -hmm. you're going on the uh, section. You're going long ways. Right. It, okay. And then when you change your orientation, you, you do the same thing. When you're going up and down, you sand this way. Great. So that's great. For the butt joints, you're going to go in both directions. You're going to go vertical and horizontal. Okay. Now, if you're having trouble with the sand pull, you can always grab, grab your sand block okay. and just, you know, do it by hand. Although this is going to take you a lot longer. Yes. You should reserve this for your corners. Okay. And for problem areas like this around, like outlet boxes, you just want to give this a nice sand. because you'll probably roll the sand pole if you go over this. So just kind of play it by ear, use your head. Now you can, get, you can get the angled sand block or you can get a square sand block. Um, I like the angled sand block because it's a little more versatile. Um, some people find the square sand box easier to do your 90 degree corners. Um, use personal preference. Awesome. Yeah. So nice to the whole garage. That's it. Let's try it one more time. Okay. There we go. Don't look. That's when it works. Oh, we need to. All right, let's get to it. Okay. If you're interested in any of the products we use in this video, you can find all of them at Lowe's. We linked them below. And we wanted to thank Lowe's Home Improvement for sponsoring this video. And if you want to see any of our daily shenanigans, come see us at Nestor's on Instagram, N-E-S-T-R-S. Until next time. See ya. Bye.